So today, uh, the main topic is self-sovereign identity, what it is, and uh, we will discuss the concept. And also we will uh, go through decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials. Those are the two main uh, components of uh, SSI systems. Yep. So um, first of all, I want to ask you what is identity in your opinion? and what defines identity like you can uh, write in the chat or you can uh, switch your microphone and talk i think it's related to personal data mm -hmm. how someone can identify themselves by name surname gender age also by maybe photograph avatar in the internet this is my first thoughts yeah, individual characteristics, yeah, for a person. And what else, like, uh, any other opinion? Like, I mean, it's, it's as a concept, it's a broad topic and uh, you could define it in a different way, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. So your identity is like uh, how you define who you are and uh, but at the same time it's also how others define you and uh, yeah we will uh, dive into it a bit more uh, so uh, but in this lecture we will be talking more about uh, digital identity as our world uh, is becoming increasingly digital and our lives heavily rely on digital systems uh, we need some sort of uh, stable, secure, and uh, privacy-preserving digital identity systems so we can uh, freely and uh, easily use uh, our identity and our uh, credentials in a, in internet like. Uh, but, uh, but since... Uh, uh, but internet, since its creation lacks uh, lacks the identity layer. Um, so, and it's, it's one of the like uh, hardest problems, uh, one of the problems, let's say, like uh, in, uh, on the internet, like it's really hard to identify who is who in, yeah. There is a popular internet meme, uh, like on the internet, uh, nobody knows you are a dog, like, uh, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's tricky. Uh, and also, uh, even though we have like uh, systems uh, that are working, uh, for example, bank ID in, in Norway is quite uh, decent and it's working, but it's uh, um, it's isolated to the Norway only and uh, doesn't cover everything. Uh, and also it doesn't have some, some sort of features that are in our physical world. Uh, also, uh, I would like to add that there are some challenges like related to information security and individual freedoms in our traditional identity systems. We are seeing so many data breaches and uh, improper use of our personal data and so on. Like, yeah, you, you should, uh, we talked about it. Uh, we have talked about it uh, in our previous lecture. Uh, and in this, uh, uh, in this lecture, I would like to introduce you uh, three models of digital identity that we currently have. Uh, the first one is uh, centralized identity, where you, uh, you, where you uh, have account with um, one organization or one website service, and uh, that's, that, um, that organization stores your data, uh, and it's centralized, they use uh, centralized servers, so, uh, and the limitations here, of course, uh, the single point of failure. So if organization fails or their uh, central servers uh, are hacked, then you lose your identity and you lose your personal uh, valuable information. Uh, yeah. And, and the second thing is it isn't very user friendly. Uh, for example, you have to uh, have separate accounts, dis uh, distinct accounts for, uh, for, um, distinct uh, organizations or 
like websites, for example, and you might forget your password. It's hard to manage everything. Uh, yeah, so it, it has some uh, problems in terms of uh, user friendliness and usability, yeah. The second is a uh, third party uh, IDP identity. IDP stands for internet, internet provider, or it's, it's also called federated identity. So here uh, we have uh, some internet provider, uh, identity provider, sorry, in the middle, in the middle between a uh, user and uh, some organization. Right? So, um, so here as, as a plus is that uh, you can uh, use your one account with many organizations uh, which are in, in sort of federation, uh, which gives you some, some sort of flexibility and uh, uh, more user friendliness, but uh, yeah, but here uh, it's also like, um, uh, yeah, the in internet provider, uh, yeah, identity provider, sorry, is in control of your most of your data, and uh, you don't have you don't fully control your data. Basically, you need to go through some uh, intermediary like uh, Facebook, for example. In uh, Facebook has social login, uh, and also Google has, and lots of yeah. So. And they use uh, the standards are like SAML. Uh, it's uh, it's for more mostly inter enterprises. You might not uh, know it, but you should know like Open ID Connect uh, protocol, uh, like Facebook login and so on, are based on this open source uh, protocols. Uh, and this uh, this uh, came in two thousand six or yeah from that uh, that time. So. And until now, it's uh, like we have we are seeing it. The third one I would like to introduce is self-sovereign identity, uh, which is the main topic of our lecture. And uh, this is a very young concept. Uh, in a sense, it was uh, like it was started like from 2015. So we, yeah, the development and implementation of uh, SI systems started uh, have started from like 2015, 2014. So it's quite early stage and uh, under heavy research and uh, yeah, and testing. So here in the model, you you uh, directly connect to your peers. So you don't have to uh, go through some uh, intermediaries, intermediaries such as uh, identity providers, uh, Facebook and so on. Uh, so we, we have peer to peer connection without any third party. And as a, as, a, as a trust layer, we can uh, rely on some sort of distributed ledgers, blockchains, or any verifiable uh, data storage. It shouldn't be um, exactly blockchain here, but uh, just in this picture, it's as a, one example, you can use distributed ledgers, for example. Yeah. So what is self-serving identity? Uh, basically, it's like, uh, as a user, you should have, you must have lifetime portable uh, digital identity, and it shouldn't rely on any centralized authority, and uh, no one can never uh, ever ever be like able to take it away your uh, data and so on, and you should have, uh, you should be able to give consents when you distribute your some of your information, for example, and it should be, uh, yeah, user-friendly, yeah. But I, I will talk about uh, more criteria. Uh, as I said, uh, the concept is quite new and uh, we have done some research. Uh, we find out that uh, in the system, like li in literature review, uh, in some uh, scholar websites like uh, Google Scholar or IEEE I -E Explorer and also Web of Knowledge we searched and uh, evaluated. Uh, results show that like only a few papers uh, are published uh, in this uh, topic. So uh, it needs uh, it needs further research and uh, further uh, evaluation. Uh, yeah, these are the principles of SSI. So first, there is uh, user control and consent. So users uh, must control their identities and share uh, person, personal data uh, only with consent, uh, consent of the identity owner itself. And sorry, yeah. So second is privacy and protection. Uh, um, identity owner, 
they are in full control and they they can disclose uh, disclosure any claims uh, in a in, in a, mi a minimized way like you don't have to share all your data at once you should be able to share uh, some, uh, only the necessary uh, necessary things to to other parties um, third is no trust in central authority uh, so identities must be held by a singular third party entity why it is a crucial um, principle because uh, the many um, many failures in traditional uh, identity systems are happening due to this uh, centralized systems uh, because um, like uh, because all data like a huge data is stored in one server or like even in in two servers it doesn't matter what much uh, you should uh, and it, it could be uh, 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 yeah, it, it's uh, it could be failed uh, like because it's uh, it's a single point of failure. So uh, we need to avoid it when uh, when implementing SSI systems. Fourth is portability. Uh, personal information and ser services about identity must be transportable. So uh, yeah, uh, it shouldn't be uh, stuck in one place. You should be able to use it uh, freely in any places and you should be able to trans uh, transfer your data to other services if you want, yeah. Uh, so we have transparency, systems and protocols must be transparent, open source, uh, it's, it's good to have open source, well-known and independent architecture. Uh, and from, from what, I see now like the space evolving in this direction. So lots of uh, companies are uh, quite transparent uh, and offering their uh, solutions to others as open source. So they can build on uh, on top of them. So which is quite nice as a community, it should be um, continued as, as like that. Uh, six is interoperability, which is uh, also very important. So identities uh, should be as widely usable as possible, so we we could so we could reach to the level so so we can have global identities. So, so for example, we could use uh, our digital identity in Norway, in also in other uh, countries like Asia when you travel and so on. Uh, but for that, the systems uh, uh, and protocols should be interoperable, which is a quite challenging task. Persistence identities must be long lived. Uh, but we we should uh, we should uh, think here like uh, there, there is a right to be forgotten if you uh, if you read uh, GDPR there is a, there is a clear uh, uh, clear paragraph stated about the right to be forgotten so if user wants to uh, delete their personal data from uh, from database he should be uh, he or she she should be able to do that. Yeah, so uh, when uh, developing uh, and implementing SSI systems, that should be considered. It's, it's important because um, many SSI systems are based on blockchain. And as you know, blockchains are uh, immutable. So the data uh, stays there, uh, like it's transparent and it's also, you cannot delete it. So, uh, so you, you shouldn't, you mustn't, okay. You mustn't store uh, any personal information or identify uh, like uh, identifiable information in 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 blockchain. Yeah. Uh, the last one we uh, we thought it's usability, which is uh, yeah, which is like to have a user friendly platform. Yeah. Uh, even for example, if you have very uh, secure privacy, um, but if it is it, if it isn't user friendly. I mean, you will not have wide adoption at all. Yeah, it's very, it will be very hard. So a consistent experience across various technology platforms and services in SSI is uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, important. Now uh, let's move to SSI architecture. So uh, as I saw, as I, um, as I showed before, the main uh, trust layer is distributed ledger. We have peers. Peers connect to each other. They uh, they store their uh, data locally in digital wallets. 
So it's like, for example, it could be a mobile application, yeah, yeah, or it could be some sort of cloud agent. Uh, yeah, so, so you can store all your credentials, all your identifiers in one place at your mobile phone. So you, ha you have a full control over it. Uh, so we have, uh, so I can talk about this about a little, yeah, okay. So we have some standards uh, in uh, architecture. Uh, first is GIDs. GIDs is decentralized identifiers. Uh, it's, it's basically just typical identifier with some, uh, some unique features. And then we have DTMS, which is a decentralized key management. So uh, when you have digital wallet, uh, the keys are, yeah, you own the keys and uh, like, and if you lose your wallet, for example, a mobile phone, you might lose your um, digital wallet also uh, consisting of your uh, all information because there isn't any centralized server which can help you to recover your uh, data here. So you need to back up your data yourself in your personal storage, for example, in cloud, and also you should uh, be able to manage that keys, your personal keys. Uh, I mean, if you, uh, if some of you use Bitcoin wallets and so on, it's quite similar to that. So uh, in Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrencies, you have digital wallets and uh, uh, I mean, non-custodial ones. Uh, and you should uh, store uh, your data um, Yeah. Yeah. So you should store your data, um, uh, not data, a seed phrase in uh, in some safe place yourself. And DTMS is a standard which are uh, which is under uh, implementation, which is uh, to tackle these problems, managing the keys. And we have the sorry, uh, did authentication. So uh, users should be able to authenticate to any service or website. So yeah, this standard tackles that one. And we have verifiable credentials on top of it. So um, you, sh you should be able to exchange your credentials that you store digitally. So uh, for this uh, lecture, we will mainly be talking about DIDs and verifiable credentials. And we will skip this uh, DKMS and uh, bit authentication. Uh, this time, maybe I will talk about DKMS in the next lecture. Yeah, we have one lecture about wallets, uh, digital wallets, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I didn't saw the chat actually uh, when I was presenting because I have like different screen now, but I just opened it and so like you, ha you, you had uh, quite answers, so yeah. Yeah, be active, uh, and I will. I will. I open up my chat now, so next time I will see it. So yeah, let's continue. So what else? Okay. Yeah. So these are the open standards for SSI, emer emerging standards, uh, and they are hosted by uh, non-profit uh, non-profit organizations mostly. Yeah, uh, W3C, Decentralized Identity Foundation. OASIS and uh, W3C again. So these verifiable credentials and DIDs are uh, hosted by um, W3C organization and they are, uh, uh, they are uh, managing it. So W3C uh, is a World Wide Web Consortium, uh, which has a quite a large number of uh, members from all community developers, um, researchers and so on. They, uh, they contribute to uh, web ecosystem, like uh, from the start of the internet uh, from 90s, I think. Uh, and they, they focus, uh, their main focus is to create standards. Uh, yeah, and, and you might know, like they have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, which uh, are focused on different, uh, different protocols and some standards like uh, for example, uh, some of the standards they uh, they contributed are HTML, CSS, HTTP, JSON-LD, uh, which is quite new. Uh, URA, URL, URNs are yeah old standards. XML and also yeah, they are. So these are the main popular ones. So I just uh, there are many new ones you might not know. So yeah, 
And they took the GIDs and uh, verifiable credentials from 2015. Yeah, and it's almost finalized now. Yeah, so what is DID? It's a decentralized identifier. It's, it's like an identifier, for example, Norwegian ID, uh, but it has, uh, it's adapted to digital, uh, uh, digital world and it has some unique features uh, that we, uh, I'm going to inter introduce. Um, for example, Norwegian ID is like, uh, it has uh, some limitations. It could be used in uh, locally in Norway, for example, and for to, to verify it, you should have direct inter interaction with the issuer, uh, for example, the Norwegian government. Mm, and uh, digitally, it also has some limitations. I mean, uh, you cannot uh, make it public. And I mean, it, ha it should be pr more private, I think, yeah. So it has some limitations. It isn't quite adapted to the digital world. In case of uh, GIDs, it's more like uh, for computer systems. It's machine readable. So it's in this format, GID is GID, is a schema. Uh, so we, it's SOV is like a GID method. I will talk about it uh, more in, in coming uh, slides. Uh, and we have this number, uh, which is machine readable, your uh, GID decentralized identifier. And it, uh, it resolves like, it consists of public key and private key quite, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's similar. Like you have, you have private key and public key. Uh, and the, the, the interesting point is it's, it could work, uh, it should work cross-border and it's specifically designed for web digital use and data is stored privately here and uh, it's not human readable, of, yeah. So, and uh, the main thing is you will not have just one GAG, so you, you could have thousands uh, thousands of pairwise pseudonymous identifiers for each connection. So uh, it provides the privacy and flexibility to users. So like uh, you shouldn't, be, you'll not be able, uh, others will not be able to tra track you. So each one will give you a lifetime encrypted private channel with another person, organization or thing. Uh, Yeah, and you can use it uh, to exchange verifiable credentials. Uh, best of all, like there is no central registration authority. So GIDs resolve uh, by itself uh, without any help of uh, centralized uh, authorities. And so, yeah, in summary, it's GID is like a permanent persistent identifier. It, uh, it never needs to be changed actually. Uh, yeah, but, but the uh, user can, um, Create your his own uh, identifier, so it's it's in his control. It's resolve, resolvable as your URLs. Uh, uh, you can look it up to get metadata. So GIDs go to um, result to GID documents, and it's cryptographically verifiable identifier. So you can prove your ownership digitally, um, and there is no central centralized registration authority. And uh, the, 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 the thing is uh, uh, how it resolves like to GID document, I will explain it in, uh, yeah. So how it, uh, so it's like a URA, uh, URNs. Uh, it's a like combination of URN and URLs. So as you know, like a URL is, uh, uh, it's like it locates your resource on the network and URN is, uh, is more like persistent name uh, and you can, it doesn't change. And the uh, GIDs is a combination of this, like uh, is a combination of this, so it can resolve to something and it, it also, uh, uh, it's persistent at the same time. Uh, so yeah, as I saw, it's a GID method here uh, and we, we can have different GID methods to resolve it. And uh, here it's GID method specific string. So it's like your identifier. Um, this is the URN syntax uh, and the GID syntax was taken from like, from URN basically. Uh, and it looks like, like this. Uh, so we can compare uh, URLs. 
and the DAPs, uh, like what, what are the uh, difference, for example. Okay, so DIDs and domain, uh, like domain names are all like balls are globally unique, uh, but DIDs are persistent. And in case of domain names, they could be reassigned. So, uh, for example, if I, uh, so you pay for domain names, and if, uh, if you don't continue to use it, you, uh, it could be changed. Yeah. And assigned to the other person who wants to continue to use that. Uh, not in case of DIDs. DIDs machine uh, friendly identifiers. Uh, domain names are human readable. Uh, decentralized identifiers are resolvable uh, using different mechanisms defined by uh, the applicable DID method. Uh, DNS also, as you know, is resolvable. And it resolves to DID documents, uh, documents and uh, this uh, resolves to DNS zone files. Um, yeah, the main point is uh, it's fully decentralized. And in case of domain names, uh, it's, um, it is uh, hierarchical and it's like uh, centralized. So in the top, at the top, you have uh, root registries. Uh, yeah, so yeah. So the main thing is that uh, you have full um, uh, fully control the DID. Uh, as a user, you can, uh, after creation of your DID, you can control it and it's in your uh, full, full control. In case of domain names, it's still controlled by ICAN, uh, it's an organization. And uh, it's, uh, and also you rely on certificate, uh, certificate agencies to use it, like to use your public key and private key to prove your ownership. You, you should rely on certificate ag agencies. And uh, it's like, a, it's basically a centralized system, which could fail. Yeah, so, so in a model, we have a shear holder and verifier, for example, and uh, identifiers are leased to individuals. Yeah, just to, it's still con comparison. But here, identifiers are owned by individuals. And verification is done through blockchains, for example. So that was the main idea when, um, uh, when, when DIDs came, like uh, there was a goal to uh, implement, uh, develop something which doesn't uh, depend on central authorities. So it shouldn't rely on DNS system. Uh, it could use it as transport and, uh, and so on, but uh, it shouldn't rely on uh, certificate agencies and so on. So you should, uh, the goal was to create something new. And uh, yeah, they came with decentralized identifiers concept as an uh, what is a DID method spec? So a DID method uh, defines how to read and write a DID and it's DID document. So as I told, like you could have different DID methods uh, which read and write and uh, resolve uh, DID to DID document. So it depends on specific blockchain, for example, you could have different networks which are based on different uh, blockchains. Currently, for example, we have Sovereign Ledger, Sovereign Blockchain, which has DID, uh, so DID, its own DID method. Uh, there are some implementation of uh, SSI systems on Bitcoin, Ethereum, some other uh, blockchains, and also we have uh, some implementation uh, in IPFS. So each one of them has um, its DID method. Uh, and it, it's developed by some other company. Uh, most of them are uh, open source and you could, you could see it like it's transparent. Uh, yeah, so, um, so it, it does some crude operations on the ideas basically. And it should give you, uh, the DID method should give you the ID document. Uh, but what is a DID document? So it's um, it's like a key value pair. Uh, so basically, uh, we have uh, decentralized identifiers, 
and it it would be resolved uh, basically a JSON LD document uh, describing the entity. Uh, because why we need GID document? Because uh, GID is just identifier, which is just the numbers, for example, and you don't get much from that. And it should be resolved to some sort of uh, more metadata that gives you uh, more information how to interact with that user or like, yeah. So GID document is uh, it, it implements that. So it's a ju just JSON uh, document which contains GID itself, uh, and also it contains a set of public keys for uh, verification. And it also contains some authentication methods uh, and some service endpoints like uh, to interact timestamp and, and your signature, of course, to, uh, to prove that you uh, like th that user owns it. You know, or, yeah. Uh, so it looks like a JSON document, uh, which has uh, public keys, some service endpoints uh, where you can interact. Uh, yeah, and your ID, the ID is standing here. Uh, yeah, so it's quite uh, simple. But uh, so your GID should be resolved to this uh, GID document. And uh, so the, so the ver verifier can have more information and can uh, validate your uh, credentials and so on. Like, as you can see, a uh, GID document doesn't contain any uh, other personal information uh, because it's publicly available, so you don't, uh, you don't, you shouldn't uh, put any personally uh, private information in the ID document. Only, uh, only keys, a signature, and some service endpoints. Yes. So yeah. Um, so it, uh, the IDs are like, like, uh, act like a URA, URAs, URIs, so uh, it could be queried and so on, and it, it, it should be resolved to a uh, data document. Uh, one second. Yeah, so JD uh, standardization. As I mentioned, basically, uh, the ideas were um, like the implementation and the basic work was started in 2015 by W3C, and it was uh, it was initiated by a company named Evernim. And uh, Evernim, uh, uh, Evernim worked out the first uh, version of DID and it gave it, gave it and contributed to the WTC uh, Credentials Community Group in 2017. And from that one, uh, like community in WTC is, uh, uh, is managing this JD's uh, 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 specification. Yeah. So you could uh, you could just uh, open this link. Uh, which one? I think this one. Yeah. So it 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 goes to the the latest version of uh, the IDs pack. So if you are interested about um, the IDs and want to uh, have more information, you could just search from from this link. So I I I, I attach it here. So yeah, but uh, GIDs only represents the very bottom layer of decentralized identity stack. So uh, we have we have GID layer at the end. We have blockchains uh, at the bottom, and we could have some uh, cloud agents, agent agents which manage your uh, uh, wallet and credentials, and they can uh, also act like uh, they can generate the GID for you. Uh, but still, you you should uh, you will be able to uh, control um, uh, all your data because you own uh, the private keys. Uh, and and here, just cloud agents can help you to resolve the uh, GID and get uh, GID documents, form connections with other peers. Uh, 
Yeah, because uh, this this sort of agent uh, system uh, helps to make the overall system more scalable. Yes, so yeah, on the top layer, we have verifiable credentials, authentication, and so on. And the idea of authentication is just basically when you, uh, for example, uh, browse a web page, you should authenticate. And when you authenticate, uh, authent did authentication means basically uh, you should prove control of uh, the DID. So you should prove your, that you own that DID. And it's uh, uh, it, and the typical procedure is just uh, you have private keys and it could be resolved in blockchain, uh, and you prove that you own that DID. So just uh, there will be some uh, challenge and response um, interaction between uh, between your mobile app or authenticator and uh, and web server. Yeah. So, uh, so the second main uh, standard is verifiable credentials. Uh, verifiable credentials, uh, as the name says, it's like uh, mm, it's like a digital credentials. We have credentials, uh, and the credentials are part of our day daily lives. We have driver licenses, uh, government IDs, uh, some sort of certificate, the diploma from university and so on. Like, I mean, when we are talking about physical world and, uh, and, and the goal of uh, verifiable credentials standard, uh, verifiable credentials working group was to, to, uh, to give us more uh, sort of uh, digital representation of this because we don't have it in current uh, current system. Um, so I think we have next slides. Yeah, like, okay, we have it in the next slide, so I can talk about that. So in uh, today's credentials, it's easy to fake, forge, and it's expensive to create and issue uh, all sorts of hard copies and it takes time and so on. Um, very slow systems, uh, and it, uh, yeah, most of them can be easily verified online. But but it's yeah, we, we have some some systems which implement it quite easy. But overall, uh, still there is uh, um, limitations, like using your. Uh, I think in Norway, for example, driver license. From only from last year, you can use it. Uh, you can use your uh, from your mobile app, I think. But before that, it, you didn't have have it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in many countries, if they don't have it, for example, and um, you just have to have your physical, I mean, hard copy and so on. Like you have to carry and uh, take it with you every time, and you could lose it easily. Also, yeah. And one 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 of the limitation is like or like challenge challenge is like it, uh, when you use today's credentials you should you you usually disclose more than is needed. Uh, for example, uh, let's say you go to uh, yeah let's say you go to a bar. Uh, at, at night, for example, and uh, like security uh, officer, like security there uh, asks you to show, uh, to prove that you are above 18, for example, or 21, I don't know. So uh, so in that case, you have to show your uh, ID to, to him and uh, you disclose all your, uh, like your name, your uh, date of birth uh, and some sort of nationality maybe, yeah. Lots of information, which isn't necessary, actually. You should just prove him that you are uh, above 18, uh, but you disclose all your uh, personal information to to a person like uh, you don't know. And yeah, but uh, that that's a limitation. And uh, yeah, and it can't scale well. So what are verifiable credentials? 
Um, it's the electronic equivalent of the physical credentials with some unique uh, and uh, features. Um, so it's all digital and under the true owner's control. Uh, it's, it's highly scalable and it's much harder to fake because it's based on some uh, crypto cryptographic, uh, uh, it has a strong cryptography uh, at the, at the beh behind. And, uh, but it, of course it should be tested and so on. Uh, uh, what is temper evident? Anyone knows? So it says temper evident credentials. What is, in your opinion, what's like, what does temper evident mean? You could write in the chat, I opened it. So yeah, I can see your answers now. Yeah, good, good explanation, Benjamin. So if any changes uh, has been done to it, uh, it should be easily detected. So that, that's temper evident. Uh, yeah, so that's one of the properties of verifiable credentials. It's cryptographically verified that you can uh, verify that you own it easily. MD5 hashing is used for that currently, right? Yeah. On programs and yeah, applications, etc. Yeah. And it enables minimum disclosure, as I uh, mentioned before. Uh, it's standardized. Yeah, it's being standardized, let's say. So uh, standardization is very crucial in, in terms of interoperability. So uh, for example, without standards and without some sort of uh, specification that you can follow or developers can follow, uh, you cannot have data exchange in the same way. So uh, you cannot have cross-border uh, uh, cross border interaction or like cross-border use, use cases, because if, 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 uh, uh, if this um, concept isn't uh, standardized. So yeah, because of that, it's being standardized now so that uh, uh people and developers in different countries can follow it and create some sort of uh, uh similar like yeah follow the one standard one uh one data model so it could be exchanged easily uh yeah that's a that, that's a uh it's easy to share online in a private and secure way yeah so it has some, so uh, potentially it has this kind of advantages over, uh, over our physical credentials. I, I have shown you this model uh, quite, uh, quite a few times. So in this, uh, we have three, uh, three, three players, we have holder, which, uh, which is a basic user, which stores, acquires, and presents uh, his credentials. And we have issuer, uh, which uh, issues these credentials. Like it could be some bank or so, and so on. And we have verifier, uh, which requests credentials and verifies it so, and, and give you some authorization to some of the services. Uh, and the verification works through a verifiable data registry uh, and most of the systems, as I mentioned, to use uh, rely on blockchains for for this component. Uh, I can give more detailed example. For example, uh, let's say <clears throat> MIT as an issue, <clears throat> uh, and it creates <clears throat> uh, bachelor uh, bachelor certificate for uh, Bob, and uh, it signs it with its private key, uh, uh, which yeah. Uh, and and private, I mean, it's DID, so basically, uh, and uh, it's uh, 
it's it's uh, it's stored uh, in a blockchain, and when uh, Bob gets credentials from from MIT, and for example, uh, uh, he is searching for a job and he wants to share with uh, with his new employer to verify that he has some skills and he graduated from uh, MIT, then he can share it with his employer and employer uh, checks signatures and validates it uh, through uh, uh, some blockchain, for example. And uh, it's like, uh, and uh, the verifier don't have to interact with, uh, so verifier don't have to interact with issue directly, as you can see in this model, uh, which makes it more scalable. So uh, he needs to check uh, signatures and validate uh, the results, that's all. Uh, which makes this system more scalable in a sense. This is, uh, yeah, this is a similar example. I think we don't have to go through it. Yeah, it's just a different example of like, it could be different, like you can verify the police, uh, police and uh, like, yeah, your driver license and so on. It could, be it could give different examples. And uh, for verifiable credentials specification, uh, I, I, I gave a link here. Uh, it's written in more like, how to say, uh, in an easy format. So it's very easy, uh, easy written. So anyone can understand it. Uh, so you can go through it. Um, the SSI space is evolving quite quick, but it's very early stage. So uh, we are currently working on standards uh, and interoperability and uh, like different companies uh, and uh, nonprofit organizations are uh, implementing their solutions. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, I believe that in coming years we will get this uh, so, I mean, the theory implemented and uh, tested and validated. So, uh, but overall it's quite interesting uh, topic and it has, um, it solves, uh, it could potentially solve many of the problems that we face in a digital world. We could use, uh, we could have our, all our credentials in one place in our mobile phone. We could uh, verify our, identity easily uh, and we don't have to go through many uh, like creation of many accounts passwords and uh, managing it uh, uh, yeah so at the end we, we could we could have some sort of um, privacy preserving secure uh, way of communication peer-to-peer -peer and also with uh, other uh, uh, trusted third parties and so on like uh, as in our physical world so yeah, that's the goal of these uh, two standards uh, and uh, uh, and also overall the concept of uh, SSI is uh, moving in towards that goal. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I think, uh, uh, yeah, that's the um, that's, uh, last part of my uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, do you have any questions related to this topic? I have one question related to one of the slides. I think it was the third one from the, the third last one. Yeah. Uh, okay, this one, yeah. So uh, it says that uh, it signs it with the private part of uh, issuer's DID. Is this the university's DID or the actual student's DID in this case? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the university's DID because when verifier verifies it, it should verify that uh, issue is uh, MIT, for example. Okay. And uh, like it works like a public key infrastructure, so you should validate its public key mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Because without that, you cannot trust that uh, like Bob could bring any credentials and say like I complete I graduated MIT. So it works like a uh, traditional PKI, but uh, it's decentralized PKI. So basically, yeah. So on the verifier side, then they need to use the public key to actually verify the private one. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Uh, any other questions? So I think um, the next lecture will, will be about digital words and uh, decentralized key management, key recovery. Uh, so it's a continuation of this topic, but we will focus on uh, <clears throat> like key management and digital wallets. What, what kind of digital wallets we have now? Uh, I mean, digital identity wallets, not, not, not digital wallets, yeah. Identity wallets, because we have uh, some sort of uh, quite a few implementations now. And yeah, so the next topic about that. Uh, yeah, so if you don't have uh, any questions, uh, my uh, presentations last usually one hour without any break. Uh, so yeah, sorry for that, but yeah, I think, uh, It's it's more suitable format for me. So I, yeah, usually it, it lasts one hour and without any break because uh, that should be fine, I think. All right. So I will pause the video. Uh, pause the recording.